All right, so let's start talking about the cells on the nervous system. You basically got two categories of cells. You have the cells that we normally think about, the neurons, the cells that actually transmit the information. But you actually have more of the other type of cells than you do neurons. The neuron that I'm showing you here is a particular type of neuron called a multipolar neuron. There are a bunch of other types, but this is one that's most common. And so we kind of use it as our basis of, of uh, what we compare other neurons to it. So you can kind of draw <laughs> my stick figure, multipolar neuron. This part is called the soma or the cell body. And then you have little short extensions coming off the soma that are called the dendrites. And you have one big long extension, it's called the axon. So the dendrites are considered to be the input portion. Information travels into the dendrites or the soma. And then if that information is important enough, then that stimulates a signal in the axon, and the axon is considered the output portion. So the dendrites and the soma are like the receiver, and the axon is like the transmitter. Inside the soma, remember this is a cell, it's a funny looking cell, Okay. It's a very specialized cell, but it's still a cell. It still has a nucleus. Right where this axon comes off of the soma is called the axon hillock. And the very beginning of the axon is called the initial segment. Now, I realize you have no idea what all this crap means, but it'll come into play in a minute. <laughs> so just trust me on this. You know, also in here, and I probably don't have this on your slide, but there are mitochondria, there's all kind of, the, your, bot, your book talks about missile bodies, uh, there's the whole cytoskeletal structure, I think your book talks about neural tubules and all. So all of that stuff is still inside that cell. It's still a cell. It still has all the major pieces and parts that most cells have. Okay, all those organelles and stuff. These axons can have branches called axon collaterals, or I think your textbook calls them collateral branches. Axon collaterals, how I learned it, so that's probably what I'll say. But the important point to realize about these is once a signal starts here at this initial segment, the beginning of the axon, it's going to travel down all the axons and all the axon collateral. So it has like a bunch of branches. Right? It has a bunch of branches, a bunch of output branches, exactly. But notice that in this particular type of neuron, they don't branch from here. They branch further along on the axon. You could have hundreds of these, hundreds of axon collaterals. The uh, little branches at the very end of, e of each axon and of the axon collaterals, each of them has branches, those are called axon terminals or telodendria. synaptic terminals. Realize there is cytoplasm in here, right? And the cytoplasm is going down the axon and into the synaptic terminals and back, right? And so the movement of this cytoplasm, particularly through the axon, is called axoplasmic transport. So there are materials moving back and forth between the soma, 
and the symmetric terminals back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, it's bidirectional flow. And so you have what are called neurotubules. Those are just the microtubules inside the neuron. Remember in the cytoskeleton we had the microtubules, the microfilaments, and the intermediate filaments? Okay, so the neurotubules are just the microtubules in the neuron. If the material is moving from the synaptic terminal back this way, we call that retrograde flow, retro meaning backwards. The reason that you need this process is because some of these neurons, you can have a neuron, a multipolar neuron that starts here in the middle of your spinal cord, and that axon goes all the way down to the muscles in your foot. That's one cell, one axon. And so, obviously, if you, you got to have some mechanism to get stuff back and forth. What you have down here in these synaptic terminals are little vesicles of chemicals called neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters are made up here in the soma. And those vesicles are sent down the axon to be stored in the synaptic terminals. These, the ends of the axon terminals are called synaptic terminals because where a neuron communicates with another cell is called a synapse. So if I had this neuron communicating with a second neuron, this is a synapse. It's the communication point, the side at which one neuron communicates with another cell. The space is actually called the synaptic cleft. But basically the end of this neuron and the beginning of this neuron and everything in between is the synapse. The cell that is sending the signal is called the presynaptic cell. And the cell receiving the signal is called a postsynaptic signal. That's right. You can have a second synapse right here. And then it just goes to the mom. And then th for this synapse, this would be the presynaptic cell, and this would be the postsynaptic cell. So pre means before, before, before the synapse. Post means after. The presynaptic cell sends the signal to the postsynaptic cell. So for this synapse, for this side of communication, that's the pre, that's the post. But then this cell can turn around and send the signal to another cell. And this, in the, for the second synapse, this would be the presynaptic cell, that would be the postsynaptic cell. Now, here's the thing. We're talking, in this particular example, I've got this neuron communicating with this neuron communicating with that neuron, right? But you can have, the postsynaptic cell is not always a neuron. It could be a skeletal muscle cell. It could be a gland cell. It could be a cardiac muscle cell, okay? So the postsynaptic cell is not always a neuron. Reflex. You touch something hot, you make your hand, right? Bless you. Something gets in your nose and you sneeze. That's a reflex. Okay, you have a, let's say, a temperature receptor in your finger. That's a receptor that detects temperature. That sends a signal to a sensory neuron. are unipolar neurons. We'll get there. So just go with me. Okay. It's little somas off to the side. So this would be the presynaptic cell. This would be the postsynaptic cell. Now this is going to send a signal. Uh, it'll actually synapse to two different cells. But for our purposes, <laughs> we'll say that it directly synapses on a motor neuron. 
tends to be a multipolar cell. And then that motor neuron is going to synapse with one or more skeletal muscle cells. Okay. And so this cell, the receptor, the pain receptor, or the, or the temperature receptor, stimulates the sensory neuron, which stimulates the motor neuron. which stimulates a skeletal muscle cell. All of this can happen without involving your brain. Have you ever touched something hot and realized you felt the heat after your arm had moved? Because what you can have in between this is you can have this thing also synapse with a second neuron that goes up to your brain. But the signal from here to there travels faster than the signal from here to your brain. So that you've actually moved your arm. Your brain had nothing to do with moving your arm. That was all, that was entirely a spinal reflex. So how did you know it was hot? Because even after this happened, the signal finally got up to your cerebral cortex and said, damn, that was hot. So, so your receptor knows it's hot before your brain does. That's correct. You're, in fact, there is so much information. Anybody think about their underwear right now? No. Now you are. But if you're sitting there thinking about it, as long as it's where it's supposed to be, you don't know it. But your skin can feel it. Yep. Right? Now, if it gets in a wad, <clears throat> you're like, you try to do it discreet, discreetly, right? You know? That's discreet. No. <laughs> you ever see me up here with my panties are in the wall? I can't teach with my panties in the wall. I can't teach if my socks slide down and get rolled up under my toes. Or if the lines like all that stuff. But here's the point. Your body, your, your nervous system is bombarded with sensations that never get to the conscious part of your brain. We'll talk about why later. 